So I planted this little flower plot in my front yard for my daughter who says she wants to be a gardener when she grows up. She loves flowers, just cosmos and zinnias and uh, a few packets of wildflowers thrown in. But we had so much of a drought that I thought these were gonna die. And then we finally got rain for the uh, three days this week and they're starting to come in a little better. So hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll make something. I'm getting butterflies and things in here already, so that's good. So I've got a lot of these feeders. Um, this is a cap and ladder, one gallon frame feeder for a medium box. And I've got a lot of Man Lake um, Pro feeders, I think is what they call them. And then I've got some mother loads as well. And I, in the past, I've liked the Man Lakes better. Um, they've got a wood top and holes that go in with ladders. And I get less drowning in those. But I experimented this year with just putting pine needles in the open wells on these. And that actually helps quite a bit. The problem with the Man Lakes is that now the base price on them is $17.50 a piece, which I think is just astronomical. Uh, the base price on these is $10 a piece. If you buy them at scale, it can be quite a bit cheaper. So you can get two of these for one of the Man Lakes. In contrast, you can get a bucket, a one gallon bucket feeder for mm, maybe six bucks all told. So I think I'm gonna be moving over to these just from a cost perspective. And I can I can fix the uh, the drowning issue that I get with these. And other than that, they're good feeders. One other thing, I tried some of these just as frame feeders with floats in them, cut wood um, pieces of wood, wood strips to use as floats. I know a lot of people use those and like them, but I hate them, absolutely hate them. When the feeders are empty, the bees build comb down into them. Uh, beetles hide in there. I got drowning with them. Absolutely hate that. I much prefer having the caps and ladders. Feeding this yard for the second time this week. I'm adding boxes with second feeders in them as I go. Just wanted to show this real quick. That is what I'm looking for. I've moved these, these frames are on the inside. I moved them to the outside. Gave them a gallon of feed earlier this week. And that is, they're starting to draw that out. It's not finished, of course, but one or two more gallons and they're gonna have this top box drawn. That's all I'm really looking for, for these bees. So sometimes even on a pretty good size colony, you will find drowned bees in these open wells. So this is a management practice. I'm gonna start putting pine needles in all of them, which is low cost. It's just aggravating that I've got to do that. But uh, extremely low cost and I think it works really well. I don't get hardly any drowning in the ones that have pine needles in them. So. I think that's worth doing. Time to begin the honey pull this year. I'm late on it, as I am on most things this year. Better late than never though. Got some good looking colonies in here. These were all nukes made early this year. Doing quite well in this location, I'm pleased. humid today this is going to take quite a bit longer than normal i'm going to have to sort through some brood frames and things so better get to it so this hive has got a full super here two mediums and then a full super and they've actually drawn out four or five they're working on maybe six frames and another super have filled up a couple of them. That's great. So what I'm gonna do is pull this one off, 
pull a drawn frame from the second box, put that in this one, put an empty frame in the second box, set this on top of here. There's a feeder in the second box. There's gonna be a feeder in the third box. I'll give them two gallons of syrup, put a B-escape on top of that, and then put these two supers back. And what'll happen is all the bees will evacuate these supers go down into this box of foundation and with them having two gallons i should be able to squeeze another box of drawn comb out of them this year even though we're in dearth that's the idea anyway so one little tip this bottom super did have just a little bit of drone brood uh, you can see them poking out on the bottoms of the frames so i actually just ran a hive tool through there and squished those as long as you kill them and then put them above in a, a bee escape, the bees will clean that out and it will not be there. They'll also clean up all of the leaks. Um, all that stuff will be gone when I come back to pick these supers. All right, so I moved one frame up into this box of foundation. They've got two gallons of feed. I think I'll get this box drawn out on them. I like to use these triangle bee escapes. I think they work pretty good. I've moved over to wax dipped equipment and I actually wax dipped some of my bee escapes, which I don't think is necessary. But then you've got wax dipped equipment and just a, if you don't paint the bee escapes, it's real easy to miss one. So uh, in the off season, I painted all of those bright red. So I, I can't can't miss one now. All right, supers up over the escape in two days. Uh, they should be pretty clear. I'll still blow the remaining bees out with a leaf blower. But I think I'm using this system. I think I'm gonna get me another box of drawn comb. This is why we put pine needles in these mother load feeders. You get a soup of dead bees which is a protein source, and sugar syrup, which is a carbohydrate source. And that is a really good food for high beetle larvae. That will cause a beetle bomb right there. So I opened this colony up. It just didn't look right. Population wasn't good. This is one of their boxes. That's obviously either laying worker or a drone layer. Non-viable hive. So the hive next to it, I'm taking a super of honey from, and I was gonna get them to draw out another box, but I'm just gonna bust these up and get them onto hives that I'm pulling honey from. It worked well. My queen was inside this feeder when I was filling it up. I don't know what she's doing in there. Get back, get back in there where you're safe, girl. No, not there. Get down there where you're safe. No, uh-uh, uh-uh, there you go, come on. Somewhere over here. Yep, yep, no. Nope. Uh uh. Come on, you're holding up progress here. There you go. No. Go. Over there. No. I'm gonna have to pick you up. You're too fat to go there. Alright, you're done. It's not too bad for some unexpected honey, unbudgeted honey. Not too bad. Back to pull these honey supers today. It's been a couple of days. I got Parker with me. Uh, some of them have cleared out better than others. I can open the lids and these were not over queen excluders, so I can open the lids and tell, oh, some of these have got a little bit of brood left. Got to be careful about them. I don't want to 
take my leaf blower and blow the excess bees out and then the queen bee in there and dequeen the hive because she's laying in the grass too fat to fly back so i'll have to do some sorting through this but this is bonus honey off of nukes that i made in spring so that's okay they can take a little more time so we got honey supers into the honey house and i've got a lot of uncapped frames in here so i've got my refractometer went ahead and calibrated that and this frame is at just over 24 percent moisture uh, that'll probably shake out it's in my experience that is not a problem because i'm going to dry it i'm in a shipping container it's very uh, airtight in here I've got a dehumidifier rated for 3,000 square feet in my 280 square foot building. And I'm gonna let it get up to about 90 degrees. And I'm gonna put fans on top of these stacks. Blow air through them. And in about, I'd say it'll probably take three days on this cause it's pretty wet. But in about three days, I'll have that honey down below 18 probably below 17 it's amazing how well it works coming through this yard pulling honey supers this is not what you want to see this hive did not get killed by wax moth it probably went queenless and got robbed out and the wax moth are just cleaning up so we'll pull this out and scrape the wax out and burn it. It's not what you want to have. So this is a bit of a mess, but I'll try to explain what I'm doing, what my thought process is here. So this hive had uh, five boxes. I had a queen excluder under the top two one of them was completely full the other one didn't have that much in it and i looked into the third box which was this one and it was full of honey had absolutely no brood in it at all had a feeder in there so i went down to the second i pulled the outer two frames which were nothing but honey put them in there i'm going to give them a box of foundation and a couple of foundations in that bottom and then I'm going to feed them. And I'm going to take the rest of the honey and put over in a, a biscuit. So they're, they've got a lot of honey stored in the brood chamber there. They're heavy enough to make it through winter right now probably. But I'm going to try to get them to draw out this next box. See if I can get some more production out of them. And get quite a bit more honey. I'm getting... 30 or 35 pounds more honey out of them than I would have if I was not taking that third. So we're pulling out of this yard. We've got honey lifted up over escapes. Got some nukes in here. I did have three dead outs. I assume they went queenless and then got robbed out. So I will have to move some more in here. I've got some odd placed hives, like new, uh, swarms that I caught back in spring that are still sitting next to the tree that I caught them at, stuff like that. I've actually got two hives in here that don't belong here. Got one there and one up here that are just sitting on the ground. They're, they don't even have hive stands, but I'll have to move them to another yard. I can't just move them over to a, a hive stand in the same yard without losing a bunch of bees. So the singles, did okay, not great. They don't have a ton of honey. They've actually got a lot of honey in there. The medium box on top of the deep, they have completely filled up with honey. They've got the deep pretty well full of honey. The box on top of that, I only gave them two or three drawn frames and then foundations and they just did not have the nectar flow to go up there and draw it out and, and produce. This one is going to be a dead out. I'm trying to get the bees out of all that so i actually had four dead outs in here nukes are doing pretty good some of these hives did really good 
This one I'm actually taking the third box out of, get them to draw out a foundation. Uh, three supers off of that one, four supers off of this one. Not all those are full. So full one, full one, that's maybe 60 to 70 pounds, half full, and then just a few frames probably. That's what that looks like. So overall, we're, we're doing okay. Out of 26, we had four dead outs. That probably, like I say, probably just went queenless and then ended up getting robbed out. That's part of your turnover. You find that stuff this time of year when you're pulling honey. This is about as hot as I like to get. It's gonna be 90 today, extremely high humidity. It's been raining. I've drank almost a gallon of cold water so far, and I think I'm just about done for the day. Just about. Got to do this kind of work in the mornings when it's this hot. Starting my day out scraping wax moth into the burn barrel. It's uh, 7.20. My help's gonna be here at eight. So I need to have all these little chores done and the trailer loaded before he's here. Need to get some heavy lifting done today. We're gonna get some more hives lifted up over escapes. It's a nasty bunch of mess right there. <clears throat> it's a failure on my part. I got, uh, got a little behind on the production colonies. I don't hardly ever lose any to wax moth. I usually don't let it go that far. I identify them when they go queenless, have a low population or get to it before the wax moth get in there. But I lost this one. I'm just gonna burn these frames. You can pressure wash those and um, you can scrape the wax off of them, pressure wash them and then re-wax them and the frames are fine. You could just pop this foundation out and these frames are almost new, but I don't use deep equipment uh, generally and uh, I really don't need those frames. So I'm not gonna put the effort into them. The box is good. I'll either cut it down to a medium size or uh, just make feed rims out of it because I really don't need deep boxes. So I'm hoping that we can be done working by about noon today. It's supposed to be a 105 to 109 degree heat index this afternoon. So that's too hot to work. That's getting dangerous. Hoping we can be done by about noon. Only beekeepers know that particular smell. So here's another dud. Open it up and thought there's not many bees in there. Get down to the bottom and there's no bees. Went queenless and dwindled. They haven't been robbed out yet. They haven't been slimed and they haven't been eaten by wax moths. So this is a good time to catch this kind of stuff. We can combine them up with some other colonies and save the equipment. So I had to brag real quick. Uh, let's see, these last four colonies in this yard are all Corey Stevens queens I got last year. Got virgins from him. This one has been big and healthy. They're not feisty. And they've made three full supers of honey. It's probably you know, 90 or 100 pounds, maybe a little better. And this is going on a two-year-old queen. Not a bad brood pattern for this time of year. If I can get these bees to move, you can see evidence of uncap recap behavior. So they've obviously got some VSH tendencies. There's some more up here. When you see that close together, they've probably have sensed a mite in there and are hunting for it, opening those cells up to investigate. I'll take that kind of queen 
every day. That, in my opinion, is a, a potential breeder because what I'm looking for is to make a nuke this year, overwinter it, make honey with them next year without them swarming. If they can give me two or three boxes of honey and a split in the spring, which this one did, and not swarm, that's all I ask. I, I don't expect to get two production years out of a queen, but uh, if they'll give me this, I'm, I'm happy. I had to show a little more on this. I just turned this frame over and you can see they're actually chewing the larvae out in some of these. They chewed the heads off. So that's definitely VSH tendencies. And that's why this time of year, you can see a lot of, it looks like a spotty brood pattern in some colonies. Well, those may not be bad colonies. Um, they might just have a lot of VSH in them. You see the larvae that that bee is chewing up right now. I made this nuke on 427. That's when I dropped the cell, and they've nearly drawn out three complete boxes. And I've been focusing on some VSH genetics, and I'd say that this hive has got it. I'll try to get a little better view of this. You can see those cells, they've actually chewed the brood out, chewing the heads off. They're going to eject that from the colony. So I will mark this one and probably do a UBO test on them in the spring. Just for curiosity, they've got quite a bit of brood in here that is completely chewed out. I'd say that's a high expression of VSH. This is a queen that I made made it to my drone stock so yeah that feels good so I've been checking this wet honey that I brought in yesterday I checked a couple different frames in here to confirm it was measuring 23 24 yesterday and I'm measuring 18 or 19 today so and I pulled some that's measuring between 17 and 18 and that's uncapped stuff. So it was really wet yesterday. A lot of water has been sucked out of it in a 24 hours. So I'm going to plan on extracting this tomorrow afternoon. Uh, or it will get so dry and so thick that it becomes really difficult to extract. So it's time. I've got to get started with it. So I'm working on getting this clarifying tank cleaned up and ready to go. I've gotten a lot of parts for it. I installed a float switch, of course. It's got a standpipe that goes in there, but I'm cleaning it right now, so that's out. But uh, let's see, I have settled on one and a half inch equipment, one and a half inch hose and pipe, and Maxant plums this with one and a quarter stuff, so I've got. A reducer bushing or reducer coupling takes that up to one and a half close nipple threaded union close nipple l type ball valve i've got a sanitary fitting on this side and i've got a reducer down to three quarter on this side so i can plug a garden hose on that and that allows me to drain it with water not not drain it when it's got honey in it but to drain it when it's got water in it. And that makes cleaning it a whole lot easier. So much easier. Let's flip the ball valve over to here. Flip it to here, that closes it off. <clears throat> flip it to there and it goes that way. So that's really handy.